This is arguably the best and most advanced keyboard for competitive gaming today, the Wooting 2HE. This keyboard has been available for some time and is fast approaching a restock with a 60% version launching shortly. These HE boards utilize their proprietary lacquer switch, which feature a magnetic stem and hall effect sensor at the bottom to determine, at all times, how far a key has been pushed down. This technology opens up a multitude of opportunities, from being able to determine the actuation and reset point of each key, to offering full analog input, and up to four-step actuation through dynamic keystroke. As there are a ton of reviews on YouTube, let's briefly touch on the stuff that's relevant to buyers, and then instead focus on competitive gaming, headlining some of the stuff you can do with it, all the stuff I do with it, and then of course whether it's worth your money. So just quickly, whilst the keyboard will always arrive with those switches pre-installed, during checkout you do have the ability to choose your desired layout with either ABS or PBT keycaps depending on availability. In the box you receive the keyboard itself, with or without those keycaps pre-installed, a 1.8 meter USB Type-C to Type-A braided cable, and a little postcard to welcome any feedback. Can I wonder if anyone's posted it? The keyboard itself comes in at a length of 460 millimeters, width of 150, and height of roughly 39, and that's before utilizing the two feet underneath, some of which will be relevant if you have one of these stupid monitor stands and angle your keyboard. You can also opt for a silicon wrist rest too, to which they've included the 60%, but I personally prefer gaming without one out of preference. Build quality is good though, with incredibly smooth key travel provided by the switch, and its plastic housing covering the PCB and aluminium plate doesn't pick up on fingerprints, which is appreciated. Overall, I do enjoy the typing experience on offer, and it weighs in at 950 grams too, which, when coupled with its eight rubber feet underneath, means that it doesn't slide around on my desk. Now, unlike most reviews you'll watch, the most important part of this one is actually in its utility software, which is now also available to utilize via the web, which is pretty freaking cool for esports competitors who can't always install software on tournament systems. Once installed though, and I recommend you do that at home, head straight over to the update tab under settings just to ensure you're up to date on any firmware and software and you're not running into any issues that have already been ironed out. There are also a couple of other things to note here. Firstly, in interface, you can select dark mode and language. And secondly, under keyboard settings, you can toggle full N key rollover to enable support for various devices. You can also reset everything back to default, something you'll definitely do a few times whilst you're playing around, and I've only had to fully reflash the keyboard under the Troubleshoot tab once, where my system stopped detecting all analog input after replugging in the keyboard. So that was a quick fix, and it's worked just fine since. There are two types of onboard profile you need to know about, digital and analog. The color, performance, and remapping tabs along the bottom are available on both, whilst gamepad remapping gamepad response and dynamic keystroke are limited to the analog profiles. It is especially important to note you can also import and export these profiles as well, which is not only brilliant to share with your community, but an absolute necessity in shortening set of time for various games, and that's complemented well by the official router base. The keyboard itself will also enable you to store up to four profiles on the device. A1, A2 and A3 will select the applicable analog profile, and mode will swap between both digital and analog. The first thing you want to do on each profile is head over to the performance tab and enable tachyon mode. This aims to reduce input latency to less than 1.4 milliseconds, although bear in mind that it does this at the cost of losing all RGB effects beyond perky static lighting. The remapping tab is also incredibly powerful and I particularly appreciate the ability to set any key as left click, as that allows me to mess around on human benchmark with the different actuation points found on the performance tab just to get more of a visual representation of the difference it makes. This tab is also where the magic happens, and the idea and principle is two part. First, you want to reduce the actuation point as much as possible, and this is so that it's faster to initiate movement or pop an ability in game, but not so fast as to cause accidental key presses that could result in prematurely firing or revealing your position. As you can see on the screen, with an actuation point right at the bottom of the switcher at 4mm, I don't actually start moving until the key bottoms out, which can make your initial movement after holding an angle feel sluggish, and the same if you need to quickly react to something in the game. A typical Cherry MX Red switch will actuate halfway at 2mm like this, whilst the red Opto mechanical switches found on the Razer Huntsman actuate at 1mm like this. 
I found an actuation point of 0.8mm was most suitable and any faster caused issues based purely on human error. The second part is rapid trigger. Now with this feature disabled and my chosen actuation point of 0.8, you can see that as I release the key, I don't actually stop moving until it reaches that same point that it activated, meaning its reset is also 0.8 or 3.2 from the bottom. This is a problem because we almost always bottom out our WASD movement keys in game, thus creating somewhat of a dead zone where we're now at the mercy of the internal spring for how quick it bounces back up for us to stop moving. The time it takes for switch to reset can also impact both counter strafing and dodging. So if I'm holding A to strafe left and then push D simultaneously to strafe right, you'll see that I stand still. And it's only when one of these keys reaches the reset point that movement occurs. And this is simply because most games cannot process the opposite input without null movement scripts or settings in the game to allow for it. This is why I tend to lean toward lower profile switches in general, or of course O-rings as both can help reduce and solve this issue. However, both of these physical solutions also result in losing that therapeutic typing experience that is inherent to traditionally deep switches. And these switches really ought to be this deep as well for analog input to be most useful. Anyway, this is precisely where Wooting have demonstrated they know what they're doing, as they've created a feature called Rapid Trigger, where we can now use a sensitivity slider to determine the amount in millimeters that the switch needs to rise back up before it resets. This value will also represent how far it must then be pushed back down again in order to reactuate if it's below the initial 0.8 millimeter of actuation that you've set. Again, you want to reduce this as much as possible, but not so much that it would cause accidental releases that may result in, for example, cancelling your slide in Apex Legends. I found that a reset sensitivity of 0.5 was most suitable for me, and I had no issues. In layman's terms though, this all means that my movement feels more responsive, requiring less corrections with my mouse, whilst causing more havoc for my opponents as they try to track my unpredictable and stupidly fast directional changes. The reality is that the difference felt can be as big or as small as the game or your playstyle allows. And the beautiful thing about this is the power to find your preferred setting is ultimately in your hands through a simple slider in software, rather than having to go out and replace the physical switch or entire keyboard with something more to your taste. With that said though, these keyboards do feature hot swap PCBs, and there's nothing to say we won't see a low profile switch alternative from Wooting in the future. Under the analog profile, you'll gain access to gamepad mapping and gamepad response, which will enable you to remap the keys to replicate that of an analog stick or the left and right triggers on a gamepad. This is exactly how it sounds and enables you to change your movement speed or rate of acceleration in supported games. Now you will want to play with the curves and gamepad response to find your preferred setting, and for me I stuck to the default linear one. I don't need to focus on the obvious benefits that this can offer over traditional on and off keyboard input in certain games, but I definitely want to demonstrate Fortnite double movement and how this feature can allow you to adjust the maximum strafe angle, which can help with dodging out in the open, particularly in their new zero build mode. To set this up, you want to toggle it on in Rutility and then head into Fortnite and enable the lock input method as mouse in the mouse and keyboard menu, before then disabling all four movement directions in the keyboard controls as it's going to be using controller input. That's pretty much it though, and the difference is immediately apparent thus making you harder to hit in the open and potentially making your build fights a little more unpredictable and potentially faster. You can also decrease and increase the maximum strafe angle too to find something to your taste and whilst this is something you can now do through a standalone app on any keyboard, also developed by Wooting, it's nice to have it built in. Finally, Dynamic Keystroke will enable you to set up to four actions on a single key, two down and two up. This isn't something I personally use, and I do think it would work better with a tactile switch, as you'd then feel the different steps rather than having to imagine them, i.e. it would feel more precise and intentional as a result. However, to give you a few use case examples, then a two-step config in Fortnite might allow you to start and edit on the way down and then complete it on the way up, and a three to four-step config might alternate between ramp, wall, and floor to build a protected ramp. You could even queue various abilities in MMOs and MOBAs, and it's definitely something I want to play around with if I get the 60% version in future. It's certainly powerful. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I stand by my original statement in that the Wooting 2HE is arguably the best and most advanced keyboard that money can buy today. 
That said, I still have to mention the same notion I always do when it comes to gaming keyboards, which is that your mouse and its ergonomics, weight and sensor, your monitor and its refresh rate, pixel response times and signal processing delay, your graphics card and PC's FPS output, and your own capabilities and the limits of human dexterity will always have the most impact on your ability to hit things in game. Your keyboard in that respect should always be the last thing that you consider, but I mean that in the sense that it should at least be good enough to avoid holding you back, i.e. not actively work against you. In this case, the Routing 2 HE represents a keyboard that's designed to bend to the will and needs of anyone, and does this without sacrificing on performance, i.e. it's not vanilla. These days, more and more people are getting into the custom keyboard market, and part of that process will be selecting a preferred switch type to install. With these Leica Hall effect switches, however, assuming you do want a linear type, then that choice is effectively null and void as these do it all. You're now able to determine the actuation and reset point in software, at full range from 0 to 100, and then also, if you're not interested in the analog input, have the option of installing O-rings if you'd prefer something more low profile, rather than having to go out and buy an entirely new keyboard or switch to install. I mean, you could even use O-rings with the analog input here by adjusting the gamepad response curves, but there's obviously a limit, and perhaps that's something I can explore in a future video. Not to mention it is a hot swap PCB, although currently only supports the Leica switches, but there's no reason they couldn't release a low-profile version in future. So I guess my point is that the routing is quite possibly the best and most safe purchase that you could make, representing peace of mind whilst offering the capability for you to go even further beyond. It might not necessarily make you a better gamer, I mean that's still down to you, but it can certainly enhance your experience through all of the features on offer by the Switch, and might even make it that much more enjoyable as you discover all of the possibilities available through utility. Will I swap and main it? No, not today. But that's not because I don't have faith in its performance, but simply because 20% of the time I end up backing the keyboard when I flick the mouse left. Now, I've never been one to angle my keyboard aggressively, so if the 60% keyboard reviews well, I think that, coupled with an experimentation into O-rings, could very well represent my endgame new keyboard. But that's because I really struggle to see anywhere else that it could be improved. Anyway, that about wraps it up. I realise this review lacks some of the details found in other reviews such as typing tests and comparisons with other keyboards, but there are many other channels on YouTube that are far better suited to make those comparisons with a larger keyboard inventory to do so. I simply wanted to focus on the stuff I care about and I hope you found it helpful. Now if you've enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you like the content, and if you have any questions or comments then make sure you leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Now though, take care. Keep gaming and I'll see you in the next video.